Has there ever been a story you've become invested in, but you never saw it come to a proper conclusion? And as you sat there wondering about what might become of that story, your mind creates this image of something that you want to happen in order to fill that void. In this case, that story has to do with a video game called Shenmue. When Shenmue released, it ended on a sense that the story was just beginning. Luckily, people didn't have to wait that long for the sequel to come out because it was right around the corner. But when that game also ended on a cliffhanger, we were forced to wait 18 years. That was 18 long years of wondering what might become of the characters Shenhua and Ryo after they entered that legendary cave. And it was just when things were becoming serious. Fans came out with wild theories, and there was the occasional interview with the creator Yu Suzuki, but he never revealed much holding on to his dream that his story will be told the way he intended, and he didn't want it to be spoiled. You see, Yu Suzuki viewed game design very differently. Not only was his world lifelike, requiring you to do realistic tasks like take on a part-time job and train in martial arts, but he intended the story to be told like a book with chapters each game only covering one or two chapters, encompassing five to ten games. Unfortunately, his dreams were too big, and his games never sold enough to fund the massive expensive games that he created. Things went dark for a while, but the fans never stopped wanting to rest, and 13 years later, they got their dream. Shemudri was announced at E3 2015, and people responded with cheers and tears of joy. The only catch was that it was a Kickstarter game to be funded by the fans, but that didn't stop the fans from donating over $6 million, breaking Kickstarter records, one of which included the fastest Kickstarter game ever. Four years passed with me and a handful of other backers keeping ourselves from being bored, mostly with humor. absorbing every ounce of information that was given. Sure, there were skeptics. With the lack of information and the amount of time that was passing by, and some business deals that were frowned upon, but that never stopped the fans that wanted nothing more than to play another chapter in the long absent Shenmue series. Well, it finally released. And by now, you probably want to know if it was good or bad or even worth it. Well, it's complicated, but let's get into it. First, let's get the bad things out of the way. Honestly, I don't think your kung fu is strong enough. If you're a newcomer to the series, don't start with Shenmue 3. First, pick up the HD ports that released recently. That's the best place to see if you like this series or not, and they are rather cheap by now. Shenmue 3 has a lot of callbacks to the old games, and newcomers won't get it, or maybe not even appreciate them. Shenmue is also very... Shenmue. And you'd have to play the other games to know what I mean by that. Hey Shenhua. What is it, Leo? I'm heading for the Sunflower Grove. I heard that's where the thugs went. Are you serious? There's gameplay that involves tasks that you would do in real life and not in a video game. They involve asking for directions, taking on part-time jobs, going to bed at a certain time, eating lots of garlic, and practicing your martial arts a lot. You'll do a lot of grinding, which involves fighting and horse stance, with the occasional rooster stance when you want to spice things up. <laughs> You don't have to do it, but you'll want to, because the fights become tedious if you're at a low level. A complaint a lot of people have is the new stamina system, which drains when you run and can only be refilled by eating. This is annoying when you want to start the game, 
because constantly you have to eat food, which like in real life could become expensive. And for some reason, garlic fills your meter up the highest. I don't know why. Maybe this is true in real life also, but I'll have to try it. But later this becomes a non-issue once you've taken a liking to horse stance, which builds your stamina level up. This system was probably put in place to create an economy where there becomes an importance to buying food and perhaps to limit your exploration when you first start the game. But it was never in the other games, and we can all probably agree that we can do without it. Another issue I had with the game was the quick time events. Oh god. Shenmue 1 and 2 were the original pioneers for implementing quick time events, which became very common years later, but recently has faded away, and probably for good reason. Luckily, Shenmue 3 doesn't have too many, but it, when it does, it's insanely fast. Like so fast that the average human isn't physically capable by the laws of physics and gravity to be able to click the buttons in time that they give you. And the crappy thing that ends up happening is that you fail QTE over and over again until you've basically memorized the button prompts. Maybe this was Yu Suzuki's intention to see if we were paying attention, but either way it isn't fun. I really hope to never see another quick time event in any game ever. Perhaps the biggest complaint people have, and me included, is the lack of story progression. Simply not enough happens, and most of it is in the last act. I get the fact that Yu Suzuki had a limited budget, but I feel like some of the quests and activities should not have been included in favor of more story. We've been waiting almost 20 years for this game after all. Yu Suzuki could have given us a tiny bit more, but all will be forgiven if we get Shenmue 4. Now for the good things. It actually feels like a Shenmue game. I was pretty worried that the game would be so different after 20 years that it just wouldn't feel like it was part of the same series, but luckily this isn't the case. This game was definitely created with the fans in mind, and I really appreciate that. Most of us wanted a Dreamcast game that played exactly like the other two, and it's basically that but with improved visuals. It's filled with activities like collecting capsule toys, lucky hit, forklifting, and turtle racing. Which turtle will it be? Yu Suzuki could have gone a more modern route appealing to the critics and masses, but chose the fans instead, and that's rare. I'll give it a try. In a recent article, he addresses the fact that Shenmue 3 was created for the fans. However, it sounds like he intends for Shenmue 4 to appeal more to the masses. Which is fine, but it's nice knowing that he dedicated this entire game just for us. The combat basically feels great when you're doing well. It's different from the Virtua Fighter style that the first two games had, and is more straightforward and is more like an RPG relying on how strong your martial arts level is. I found it easier to pull off moves in this game compared to the others, but this new system won't appeal to everyone that really liked the old fighting system. I however enjoyed it. The locations include Bailu Village and Nauru. And they both do a great job of feeling like real places that I would want to visit and live in in real life. Bailu has that small town feeling that I loved in Shenmue 1, and Nauru has the busy big city feeling of Shenmue 2. I really love the simple country lifestyle of Bailu Village, from the scenery to the people that dwell in it, finding time to earn a living by fishing and chopping wood, then entering the nightlife gambling. With Nauru, I love the density and how there seem to be endless shops, each having a chobu-chan to this find in it. it. I also love standing on the balcony at night after a hard day's work, talking to Shenhua underneath the stars and city lights. I kept thinking to myself how much I wanted to go to Guilin and live in a place like this, and that's very important for games to achieve.
I ended up having a really good time with this game. I found it relaxing to play after stressful days at work. I knew that I had this relaxing world that I could always come home to. I'd be woken up every morning by Shenhua, practice martial arts, some days fish, some days help the locals, and other days advance the story little by little. I played the game at a slow pace, never rushing, and it paid off. It was unlike any other game where usually I'm just trying to beat it as quickly as possible and then instantly forgetting about it. Shenmudri is what games should be, a nice relaxing escape, and I can't wait to do it all over again. So was Shenmue ever a good series, or was it just nostalgia based? One would have to have experienced the series to know that answer. But I can assure you that it isn't nostalgia, because I experienced the series years after it released. Shenmue affects you on a different level than games typically do. And I've often told people that you don't play Shenmue, you experience it. When looking back at the series, it feels like memories of a journey that I went on, one that changed me as a person. I started on a path of vengeance and grief, then it became one of enlightenment and character growth. And sure there were some moments that I look back on not so fondly, but so is the same in real life, and because of that, it feels like it was a real journey that I went on, in a land that I was alone in, a place I had to find a part-time job, earn money, I had to stay at a cheap and sketchy apartment, made some great friends along the way, as well as enemies. I had to ask the locals for directions, become an apprentice under martial arts masters. I also made some stupid mistakes along the way, but learned from it, and little by little, became stronger and a better person. This is Shenmue, and it's an experience, and it's more than just a game. And I hope one day to see the conclusion to the story the way it was originally intended. Then I could look back at it as a whole and see why Yu Suzuki was so willing to wait so long to release it the way he originally intended, rather than just giving us the rushed version. For years, Yu Suzuki waited, holding on to his creation, never giving up on his dream. The most important thing that we can learn from Shemurdri is to never give up on something that you want. And what you once thought was gone forever can sometimes come back. Never stop dreaming and pray to the stars for Shenmue 4.